the Sergeant First Class Aaron Heft with the Pennsylvania Army National Guard. I'm a platoon sergeant with the 111th Infantry, and I serve as the 111th Battalion Historian. My full-time job is with the National Guard Bureau in Arlington, Virginia, where I serve as the NCOIC of the Combat Field Studies Program, a program that takes soldiers from across the 54 states and territories to Europe to study the actions of their units in World War I and World War II. The 20th Division was in some of the most historic and brutal battles of the First World War. Their defense along the River Marne earned them the nickname Men of Iron, and their actions in the Meuse-Argonne helped hasten the end of the war. But in the memoirs and retellings of the veterans of the unit, the battle you're most likely to hear about is one you've probably never heard of, the Battle for Fiends. Fought in August of 1918, the battle is over 100 years old today, but still shows some important lessons for our leaders. In early August of 1918, the 32nd Division, composed of men of the Wisconsin and Michigan National Guards, had fought their way across France and secured an important position on the River Vell. They had fought in Alsace, Javigny, and finally captured Fiennes as part of the Second Battle of the Marne. The late terrible, as the French referred to the 32nd, were in pretty rough shape and needed some relief. That relief came from another National Guard unit. On the night of August 6th, the men of the 56th Infantry Brigade, today's 56th Striker Brigade of the Pennsylvania Army National Guard, moved in and occupied the position on the Bell River at Fiemes. They pushed across what was remaining of the bridges and secured a foothold in the town of Fiemet across the river. Corporal Chester Baker of the 112th Infantry recalls that action. As we poured across the bridge, Machine gun fire from trenches in the Chateau de Diable beyond increased ominously. So fierce, in fact, that none of our companies were able to get across the bridge in any force. So those of us who made it were on our own. Cut off as we were, we crouched in wrecked doorways or behind shrubbery, warily watching dim figures gliding stealthily about and not knowing whether they were friend or foe. Chester Baker, The Boy's Diary. Themes was not a traditional World War I battle. Men who had trained for trench warfare found themselves in an all-out street fight. As they moved house to house, street to street, knocking out German machine gun emplacements, the artillery rained down on them. It quickly crumbled the buildings and pushed them into the basements, which became a bunker to bunker fight. This is where the men of the Pennsylvania Division taught us our first lesson of the Battle of Fiemes. Think outside the box. As they were forced underground, they broke through the walls and the cellars, connecting them all into a subterranean tunnel, where they could move across their line, reinforcing positions and evacuating casualties. When the men were forced to do something they weren't prepared for, they improvised, and they created a system which ensured victory. Sergeant Bob Hoffman remembers. As dawn approached, it was evident that something unusual was going on over in the German lines. I quickly gathered a group of my men and we dashed into the cellar below us, then worked our way as fast as we could through the holes in the stones of the cellars. I distributed these men throughout each house, and I myself went on to the last house in the block which we had tunneled. I was hardly in place when I saw the Germans coming down the street. Clumpity clump they were going, with their high boots and huge coal bucket helmets. I can see them coming, yet bent over, rifle in one hand, potato masher grenade in the other. Far down the street was the barrier, usually occupied by the Americans. They were centering their attack on that part of the town and never dreamed that we were in the houses so far up the street. The work of the day before making these holes through the cellars had paid us good dividends. I believe that on this tunneling of the cellars made it possible for us to hold the town. Bob Hoffman, I remember the last war. The men of the 56th Brigade fought off repeated attempts by the Germans to take the Vassell region. Bob Hoffman, later promoted to lieutenant, would only see a handful of these, as the town of Fiemet changed hand five times in the month of August. The battalions would rotate in at night, under the cover of darkness, and occupy the city, fight for a couple of days, and then be rotated back out when their time was done. The men of the 111th Infantry and 112th Infantry spent nearly a month in this condition, fighting off repeated German onslaughts, artillery barrages, and everything the German army could throw at them. With the bridges damaged or completely destroyed, they suddenly found another threat emerging behind them. Cut off from their command, their communication wires cut by German artillery, the men of the 111th and 112th found themselves without a way to communicate to headquarters. That's where Lesson 2 from Themes comes into play. Keep your comms up. Brave men in the 111th and 112th filled that communication gap on foot, 
running the span of the river Val, crossing the remains of bridges, crawling through rubble, and even swimming the river in some points to get that message back to their higher command. As the division history recalls, Too much cannot be said of the valor and daring of the runners. As a rule, they were boys under 20 without any sense of fear. No matter what time of day or night an order might be handed them to be delivered in any point where the shelling might be the hottest, they always started and were never known to stop until their destination was reached or they had fallen in their tracks. History can never pay too high a tribute to these boys and their many deeds. Pennsylvania in the Great War. In the early hours of 27 August, the German army made an all-out push on Fiend. When they attacked Fiemet, they hit the 112th Infantry on three sides. The men of the 112th were faced with German stormtroopers with machine guns, rifle fire, flamethrowers, and grenades. They fought valiantly, but they were pushed back to the Bell River. It was there that they taught us the third lesson of the Battle of Fiemes, a good defense in depth. The critical junction at the Bell could not be lost, and the men of the 28th Division had prepared. They had plotted their positions and placed machine guns and mortars, and they were ready for the attack that was coming. As the division history remembers, Our troops collected a heavy toll from the enemy before being forced to evacuate Fiesmet. The streets were barricaded and wire entanglements placed about 75 yards behind the barricades as to be out of range of hand grenades. The Stokes mortars were placed to take care of possible river crossings, and these, together with one-pounders, would do effective work against any attempt of the enemy to force a crossing. Pennsylvania in the Great War. The 56th Brigade held the line at Thiems until early September, when they were relieved by French divisions to prepare for the upcoming Meuse-Argonne Offensive. In that month on the Bell, the 56th Brigade earned an astonishing 36 Distinguished Service Crosses for Valor, and a member of the 111th Infantry, Sergeant James Mestrovich, earned the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions in Fiemet. Though it would never become famous in the history books, the memory of Fiemes, Fiemet, and the Vell River would linger on in the memory of the veterans of the 28th Division and the 111th and 112th Infantry for years to come. In November 2019, soldiers from the 28th Division, along with historians from Fort McNair's Center for Military History, traveled to France and examined the exact battlefields where the soldiers of the 111th and 112th fought along the Belle River. By walking the grounds of Fiemen and Fiemet, these soldiers not only learned tactical applications and scenarios, but were connected with their history and saw why, even a hundred years later, the 112th Infantry's crest still bears the bridge over the Bell River that was enshrined by the battles of Fiend and Fiemet. <laughs>